but good on him for having a go. Um, I call the Honourable David Bennett. I just wanted to um, follow on from the speech from Jan Logie, and I think she made some very important points that this House needs to address um, during the course of the next day or so. And that the first thing is um, around the importance of this House providing for those in most need. And uh, uh, the Honourable Jan Logie uh, mentioned some very important um, uh, needs of the people in her community. And um, I just want to recognise some of the needs of people in um, other communities as well that, um, that seek to be, have assistance, and, um, and especially the Hamilton community, as my good friend, the Honourable Scott Simpson, has mentioned. And that relates to an SOP that has been um, tabled in this House in regard to Schedule uh, 1 of the um, Income Tax <laughs> Act 2007. And in that schedule, it seeks to change, and this is a SOP in the name of the um, Honourable Stephen Joyce, where it seeks to uh, change the tax rate in Table 1, uh, Row 1, um, to uh, the 9.5 per cent for uh, income between zero and $14,000. And the reason I raise this in regard to Jan Logie is because there are a lot of young people and that are out there that have started in their first jobs in my community um, that um, are working. They do not have the um, ability to take up any of the packages that are uh, in this bill because uh, they do not have children. And um, they are hard-working Kiwis that um, are finding it very difficult to get ahead in their life uh, because they are paying high taxes for other people and they do not get the benefit of not having um, children. And um, as Jan Logie mentioned in her speech and we reflect on, um, there are a lot of people in a state of need and these people are also in a state of need. And just because they are single and not have children but they are on a low income does not mean that they are not in a state of need, Ms Logie. And the thing is that those people need to have some kind of uh, support from this House and this government, and this does not happen. And this SOP would give them that That's because right. it would give them that tax cut, which would enable those very people to have more money in their hand because they're not going to get any money from any family assistance or any of the tax Jan credits that has been to that. Jan and, um, and taking your point, Jan Logie, that we need to look after those people in most need. That community has not been represented That's right. here today, and it has not represented in the effect of this legislation that keeps their low incomes at high tax rates when we could be looking after them and giving them lower tax rates so that they can actually look after um, their community, their south. And, 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 and Jan Logie talks about nine long years. Well, these are nine long years that those people have been waiting to That's get right. some money back in their hand so that they can get ahead. That's and it was given to them and taken away by the Honourable Jan Logie. And, um, and it has been and it will be a long nine years for them because there's nothing in there for those people that are struggling out there that are single and have no children. I raise also another point in regard to um, a new amendment in the name of the Honourable Louise Upston. And that is in regard to um, a new section 58A. And that seeks to include better public service targets in, um, in, the, in, the, uh, in the legislation. And that's really important because we need to look at all mechanisms that we can evaluate the success um, of government and the impact on our communities. And those better public service targets um, that are looking at the outcomes for low and middle income families with children, um, looking at um, reducing the number of working age um, clients from, from the, in that um, in point two, um, the government ensuring that 90 per cent of pregnant women register with a lead maternity carer. Um, the, well, it is an amendment to the bill, and who, who um, that member across the other side needs to look at this is an SOP, so it is relevant to this bill, and uh, that is what we are debating here today. So, um, and looking at literacy and numeracy rates, and um, 
and uh, also reducing the number of children living in households earning less than 50 per cent of the minimum wage. So those are very good points. Sir. Um, I call the Honourable Ruth Dyson. Move that the question be now put. The question is that the question be now put. Point of order, Mr. The Point of order, Mr. Point of order, the Honourable Scott Simpson. Mr Chair, we've had um, a fairly short debate on this uh, process so far, but I want to raise with you a point relating to the supplementary order paper that has been very recently put on the table by David Seymour, the MP for Epsom. Sir, um, this is a handwritten document, uh, and although um, he is a graduate of, of that order, very please? fine school, Auckland Grammar, um, it's barely legible. And for the committee to be able to consider properly his SOP, I wondered if we could seek your guidance about the legibility of the, supplement, the handwritten supplementary order paper that's been put on the table, uh, or maybe ask, invite the member to perhaps read it out so that the committee can, can uh, fully comprehend order. it. Order. Thank you. No. no, I don't need any more assistance. Thank you. No, I've read the uh, tabled amendment. Uh, if, the, if it is ineligible, then uh, uh, thank you. Uh, then it'll be, it will be ruled out of order. I have read it and understood it. Uh, and so uh, the question, as I point of order, Louise Upsner. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, less than a minute of this House's debating time has so far uh, been available to the SOP that I tabled, um, and I would request, um, Mr Chair, uh, it's a substantially no. new... Order. That's not my responsibility. Uh, the the, uh, the uh, amendment arrived when it arrived, uh, and the, the, this debate has been going uh, for almost four hours and 25 minutes. The member had plenty of time to get that in here. I, th I believe that members have had enough time to peruse those amendments, and the question. There are how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven points of order all at once. Now I'm 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 starting to think that points of order are being raised to stop the vote from taking. So I I am. I am going. Uh, if this is any way trying to relitigate uh, my decision to accept the closure motion, uh, then there will be consequences. Point of order: the Honourable Louise Upston. Thank you, uh, Mr. Che Mr. Chair. Um, the SOP that came into the House within the last quarter of an hour, I had tabled first thing this morning. Uh, I had asked the clerk if it was out of order, and nobody had advised me. I had then issued a new SOP for consideration by the House. Um, so I, I think, Mr Chair, the consideration should be uh, that I had tabled it and hadn't been advised and in terms of... And your point of, of order is? The point of order is that less than a minute has been debated uh, on the SOP. Well, uh, unless the member can point to a standing order or a Speaker's ruling uh, around that, I'm not going to accept that. Point of order, Jamie Lee Ross. Feel was uh, unfairly considered there is that we are under urgency and we have had limited ability to write SOPs and limited ability to consider what is a very far reaching tax bill. The right of the opposition under urgency to have the ability to write SOPs and have them debated is paramount. And Mr. Chair, the argument that my colleague was making who is a senior member who has been a minister in the past government, she was making the point that it deserves to have debate. And this side of the House does deserve to have that right under urgency. Thank you. Um, if, if the Honourable Louise Upston is referring to uh, the uh, tabled amendment on better public services, uh, then I am ruling this out of order, so there will be no debate on this. Okay. Pardon? It's outside the scope. Sorry, outside the scope of the bill. Point of order, the Honourable Louise Upson. 
objective of the bill is clearly stated about supporting low and middle income New Zealanders. Uh, it's about child poverty and it's about ensuring children have the best start in life. My SOP, if the House would give it time to be debated, is all about measures to support yep. um, I'm sorry, exactly the, the objective will be of the be seated. Uh, the member can't relitigate my decision to uh, rule this out of scope. This uh, amendment effectively uh, creates uh, a new uh, Better Public Services Act, or, or amends that. This is outside of the scope of, of the bill we are debating. I go back to uh, my call. No, sit down. Yeah. Uh, I'm warning members, if there's going to be continuation of questioning my decision to accept the closure motion, I can assure the members the closure motion is not going to go away. So uh, repeatedly asking questions about different tabled amendments through a point of order will be ruled as causing disorder in the House. Point of order, Simeon Brown. Point of order, and it relates to uh, the minister when he was last in the chair, Grant Robertson, asked, he was, dis he was uh, replying to um, the honourable uh, member, David Seymour, who, and the minister said, he is interested in the views of the, ha of the parliament on tax indexation. Uh, now, I'm, I'm sorry, the I'm member interested will be seated. In, that, I'm is sure not, who are that is not a point of order, and I repeat what I said before. Please, no more points of order trying to relitigate uh, parts of the debate and tabled amendments. Uh, 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 SOP on the table about 1220. No. E e e e e e e I have had enough of this. If anyone relitigates that decision again, they will be leaving the chamber. The question is that the question be now put those in point of order, Jamie Lee Ross. Mr Chair, a member of our party mm. did not even get an opportunity wow. to get her point of order out. I say, Mr Chair, that a member at least should be shown the respect to be able to put her point of order to you. If you wish to say she's wrong, you may, but she has the right to assert the point of order. That will be for the, the committee of the whole to decide. When, oh yes it will be, will be for the committee of the whole to decide when the vote is taken, the decision of the committee will be final. If they want to hear from uh, members that have tabled amendments, then they will have opportunities to do that, if the, if the committee of the whole decides so. Point of order, the Honourable Nick Smith. Uh, Mr Chairman, I actually think uh, you have uh, been very fair in your chairing of the session this morning, but, but I would make one request of you. In your latest rules, uh, ruling, you chose to use te reo, and that's entirely appropriate, uh, but there was not an interpretation service. And so I simply ask if the Chair is to use te reo in their rulings, can they please ensure the Māori interpretation is available so that we can properly respect what I think has actually been very effective cheering by the member? Yeah, that's not a point of order. There was a translation. And second, when the first language obviously wasn't working, sit down, I went to the second language and perhaps that worked and it did. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm going to put the question now. The question is that point the question order. be now point of put. Order. Those of point of opinion order. will say aye, and, a, and against say no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Point of order, the um, Jamie Lee Ross. Chair, my first point of order mm -hmm. is that I have the right to raise the point of order. I am the chief whip for a party that represents 56 seats in this parliament. For you, sir, 
to refuse to even allow me to raise a point of order is grossly disorderly and disrespectful of members of this House. And so what is your point of order? Because that surely was that surely could not have been your point of order when you stood up. So what was that point of order? I wish to make two points of order. That was my first. My second point of order is that we have gone past one o'clock. It is in the standing orders of this parliament that there is a break for the lunch break. And Mr Chair, Mr Chair, uh, I was trying to raise that point of order to you before you dismissed me and did not hear me. No, I have accepted the closure motion and the vote will take place. Point of order, David Seymour. Mr Chair, can I put it to you that you have lost control of the House because of the way you have chaired it? And if you are not going to allow me to speak, when I have substantive things to say in response to the Minister's constructive comments on my amendment, then there is no point in being here. And if you are going to expel members for relitigating the point of view, point order, of order we might as member, well go anyway. The member will leave the chamber. The question point of, has point of order. Point of order, Jamie Lee Ross. Mr. Chair, this is now at a point where we are questioning the very process and procedure of the House. And I submit to you that your decision not to allow points of order from this side has led us to the point where we are in a grey area, where I assert to you that it is for you to rule, and you should rule, that. We did not vote before one o'clock, and it is only when a vote has been taken before one o'clock, or we are in the middle of a vote, that you cannot raise for lunch. We did not vote. We did not have the ability to vote before one o'clock or during one o'clock, and therefore the House must break for lunch. No, no, no. No, I took the closure motion before 1 p.m. and the voting started before then. I, I took the closure motion before 1 p.m. The question starts as soon as you put the question. As soon as you put the question, that's when the vote starts. Just one more clarification. As soon as I accept the closure motion, that is when the vote starts. So the start. The vote started clearly before 1 p.m. Relitigating that is not going to change it. <coughs> the Honourable Louise Upsnam. I move that the Speaker be recalled. Can the member uh, 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 explain to the House the exact point that she uh, wants Yes, to because make? points of orders have been raised uh, and they have been ignored. Um, points of order from any member in this House. Uh, I believe there is a duty for the person in the chair to accept the points of order, and I have requested um, that the speaker be recalled. The member can deal with uh, concerns around points of order with the speaker at a later time. The, 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 yep. yep. Once the closure has been accepted, everything has to be relevant to that. That's what I say to. Does she want to speak about that? Can I clarify then with uh, the Honourable Louise Upson? Does she want to recall the speaker about the closure motion? Because that's not what she said. I want to recall the speaker because of points of order that have been raised in this House. Uh, then my original ruling stands.
from the presiding officer and the chair uh, that you are refusing my request to have the speaker recalled. Because if that is the case, sir, I'm not sure that this has ever happened in the New Zealand Parliament. Well, well can I make it easier then? The member can request to recall the, uh, the speaker on the closure motion. That is not what she said. Point of order. Point of order, the Honourable. I have requested that the Speaker be recalled because the presiding officer has not accepted points of order that have an impact on the closure motion. Okay, that is fine. So, okay, the question is that the Speaker be recalled. Those of that opinion will say aye. Aye. Those against will say no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. The speaker will be recalled. The house is resumed. Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Speaker. Um, the member of the Honourable Louise Upston has asked that you be recalled uh, about a closure motion that I have accepted. I believe that there were a number of points of order that were uh, repetitive and uh, trivial, uh, relitigating the same points, which I thought that I had dealt with. Um, the members disagreed and uh, so have asked that you be recalled. The Honourable Louise Upston. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, there are a number of points that um, I wish to put on the table um, for your consideration, sir. Um, the, the first is around uh, points of order that, uh, as well as myself, others were raising uh, regarding um, SOPs that had been tabled um, in the latter part um, of this debate. Um, one, sir, in my name had been tabled at the start of the day, uh, and I had not been given any indication... Could, could I ask the member to refer to the particular standing order or speaker's ruling she's asking me to uphold or change? Uh, I'll come back to that point, sir. So, in terms of my understanding of the order of the House, uh, members have the ability to raise points of order. And in, in this instance, uh, points of orders were being raised uh, uh, very close to the one o'clock, uh, and uh, the presiding officer at the time ignored members, multiple members that were raising different points of order, uh, and moved further in the proceedings. Uh, and my understanding of the House procedures, sir, is that at one o'clock the bells ring and the House lifts. So at the point in time that that was happening, there were multiple members with different points of order. And given the House is an urgency, sir, I think it is important, given this is the only okay. opportunity for scrutiny, okay. right. for so that to be considered. I think the member's considered. made her point. Is there anyone from the government who wants to add to it? Um, I will call Jamie Lee Ross, but I'll remind him that I've watched the television. Uh, sir, I'm glad you watched the television because there are a couple of points of order I wish to raise. The first point... No, no, the only thing that the member can do is to address the question before the House... Sit down, please. ..on the reference made by Louise Upsland. There is nothing else before the House. Yes. I will raise the other matter with you later, then. Uh, standing Order 58, Effect of Urgency. It says when the House sits till, and it says that the House will suspend at 1pm. Yep. The committee will suspend at 1pm in this instance. The committee must suspend at 1pm unless the committee is in the middle of a vote. Whilst we have disputed the reasoning, we must accept that the chair did accept a closure motion. However, that was not voted on. We were not voting. And at the point that we got to one o'clock, there were members who were seeking to raise points of order and there were members who were seeking to have a ruling 
from the chair. We are very unhappy that the chair was not willing to entertain any points of order. We also dispute the chair's decision to continue to go past one o'clock when the standing orders okay. are very clear. Right. We were not voting. Okay. Thank, and you. The Thank you. The Is there any other member who wish wishes to make a point on this? The Honourable Christopher Hipkins. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I, I just want to raise, a, 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 relate, related to um, the point of order raised by Louise Upston, once a vote has been commenced, is it an order for a member of the House to scream at the presiding officer okay. through the no, conduct order. of the vote? The member will res resume a seat. I did indicate that I had been watching the television and am aware of the behaviour in the House at the time. Uh, this matter is a very simple matter. The question of the closure uh, is something which is at the discretion of the chair. Uh, and unless um, I, I have not known of ever of any circumstances where a speaker has overruled a chair in accepting a closure, it's, it's the end, and I'm certainly not going to do that. Uh, Speaker's ruling 61.3 uh, is the one which is very clear on that. The question then comes, was the closure accepted before one o'clock? It was clearly accepted be before one o'clock, uh, probably around five to one, and members will be absolutely aware members will be absolutely aware that it would totally defeat the purpose of having closures if they could be indefinitely delayed by points of order. Uh, my ruling is that the closure was properly accepted before one o'clock. The motion uh, will be uh, voted on now, and voting on amendments and the substantive questions will continue until they are completed. Thank you. The House, I declare the House uh, in committee on the Family Package Income Tax and Benefits Bill. Okay, I'm going to restate the question that I already put, and that is the question is that the uh, Sorry. The question is that the question be now put. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. That of uh, against will say no. no. The, the ayes have it. Party vote has been called for. The clerk will, will conduct a party vote. New Zealand National.